Okay, here's the tutorial of how I created this dynamic employee availability calendar in Microsoft Excel. I started out by creating a data table to develop the dynamic calendar which is actually a styled pivot table. The pivot table contains week dates, weeks, months and date information and to create that pivot table, I started out with the underlying data. The underlying data is a data table with all the dates in the year, that is 365 dates. So I'm preparing 365 rows of data, starting by hard coding the first date in the year, January 1st, and then just incrementing each row with a plus one sum operation. The next thing I do is to fill out the other columns, day, month, weekday and week number, and I do this by applying the corresponding date time functions in Excel on the original date data in the first column. So, to get the date day I get the use day, to get month, I use month, work day, work week and so on. I'm done with that now and I've formatted the data as a table. And I've now created the pivot table. So like I said, this is a stylized pivot table and I explored a few hacks to get the pivot table to look like a calendar. I put the week number in rows, the weekday in columns, and then the day in values. I'm going to use the month data as a slicer, and when I select one month, it filters and makes the data look like a calendar. I go to pivot table design to turn off the totals for both rows and columns, and then turn off auto fit columns in the pivot table options to prevent the calendar from adjusting columns every time I select a new month on the slicer. I also turn off field captions, expand and collapse buttons to make the pivot table look less like a pivot table and more like a calendar. I change the column headers, which are the weekday data, from 1 to 7 to the actual days in the week, Sunday to Saturday. This I do by simply overwriting the data in the pivot table. Now I'm putting finishing touches, hiding the grid line and changing the design of the pivot table. The month names should show up in the slicer, and not the month numbers, so I go back to the source table, and wrap the data in the month column with a choose function that replaces the month number with the accurate month name, based on the ordering of months in a year. Once that is done for all the rows, I go back to the pivot table, refresh it, and make slight tweaks to the slicer design, removing the header which has the filter, this way it's impossible to select more than one month at a time, and increasing the number of columns so that all month names can be viewed at the same time. With this, the pivot calendar is now fully set up. Now to add on the employee availability element. I go back to the source table and include new columns, one new column for each employee. I need each employee to have an availability status for each day of the year, the availability statuses being available, off work and unallocated. To get this, I use the combination of the choose and ran between function to randomize these data and copy this function to all the cells corresponding to the days for all the employees in the year. I've used this hack in a couple of my previous videos to create dummy data so you can check out Excel Hack 83 on my blog 101excelhacks.county for a detailed explanation on this. Now I'm creating a combo box from which each employee name will be selected to view their availability status for the months in the year. I go to the developer tab, under form controls select the combo box and draw one out. 
I create a new sheet for reference data to the combo box and create a list of all the employee names I've added as new columns to the source table. Right-clicking the combo box brings up the format control option, which allows me to make reference to the employee list I've created and also reference an index cell. At the end of the table I've added a new column titled cell employee, this column will be dynamic and hold the availability data of the employee selected from the combo box. I've used the index function to ensure that the cell above this column's header updates to reflect the name of the employee based on the index cell for the combo box. Yes, on. The first run of this formula it threw up value errors because I forgot to lock the reference to the source cell but I've made the update and it's alright now. That's all set up now and with a sanity check I confirm the combo box is working as expected. Now back to the pivot calendar. I changed the field in the value area from day to date, this is because I need the pivot calendar to respond to the data that corresponds to the dates on the source table. I have to adjust it from count to sum, and this returns the dates in their full Microsoft Excel date format notation, with a simple format cell operation and custom formatting adjustment I edit all the cells to show day alone so they are back to looking like dates as I need them to. Now to the final bit, the dynamic colors that change the dateful colors to green, yellow and red depending on the availability status of the employee for that day. This of course is powered by conditional formatting, so here I am setting up the conditional formatting rule that uses VLOOKUP to find what the availability status for the employee on cell employee column is for each date. I set up three rules, one for when the VLOOKUP finds the status as available, and then the rule is to make the full color green, the second rule for when the VLOOKUP finds the status as off work, and the rule is to make the full color red, and then the final rule for when the status is unallocated, and then the full color should be orange. It's a lengthy formula so made a couple of bloops but finally got it working. And there you have it added on the legend at the side so you know what color means what to finish it up. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.